Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about a long-awaited Android hacking where we can gain access into an Android device just by redirecting the user or giving the user a malicious link and then download the application and can, the application can be embedded into a calculator, into a browser, into some feature and function. And from there on, we can immediately gain a reverse shell through Metaprinter. And then on the second part of the tutorial, we discuss about post-exploitation. What else can we do to actually further our access, maintain privileges, gain escalator privileges into Android device? Because after all, Android device is actually using a lot of the core capabilities of Linux systems. So without further ado, let's get started on today's tutorial. So on the right side of the screen, I actually have Call Linux running. So I can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. So I have config, we can see the IP address of 192.168.1.23. So again, your system could be using many different IP addresses depending on how you set up your lab environment, whether you're hosting it on the cloud, on-premises, and so on. And on the left side of the screen, I actually have an Android device that's running and it has an internet connection and is able to interact freely within the network. So at the same time, I also have a separate device that's running, which is my physical mobile device. So there's going to be some limitations and differences between a virtual Android and a physical Android device. So here, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and enter MSF Venom help. So this will actually list down all the parameters that can help us generate our payload. So payload could come in an APK format, an EXE format, an MSI format. So for today's tutorial, we're specifically going to target the APK format. So here we can see the payload type that can put in, the format, the encoder, the encryption, and so on. So there's a lot of capabilities within the system that is really important for you to actually try out on. So that's really key because the more you try, the more you actually learn. And the more you learn, the more you can apply and it's going to be really, really helpful in your day-to-day -day work. So that's really, really important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at some other capabilities. So we're going to go ahead and enter MSF Venom and then followed by dash P, which is the payload toy. And we're going to put Android because this is the target platform we're going after followed by Metaprinter, and then followed by reverse underscore TCP. So it's going to be a reverse Metaprinter shell that's going to come in and then we'll be able to get more information, more data from there immediately. So that's going to be really powerful. So moving forward, what we're going to do is enter LHost, which is the listener attacker machine. So 192.168.1.23. So remember again, I want to highlight one more time. Your IP address, your part number is going to be different. In, in fact, at the same time, your shell, your Metaprinter option could be very different from mine. So remember to keep all these values somewhere so that when you launch your Metasploit framework, you're able to utilize them immediately. So L port, we're gonna set it to four fours. And from there, we gotta output this and I'm gonna output it into directly my Apache web server. So from here, we'll be able to look at many different options immediately and be able to put four file attack. So I'm going to call it Android app.apk. I'm going to hit enter on that. It's going to take probably four or five seconds to generate a payload of about 10,000 bytes, 10,008 bytes. So those can actually give us the ability to send it to the user. So this time around, we see it's 10,092 bytes. And we can send this file to the user immediately. And from there on, we can launch our attack, launch our capability of phishing campaign, and so on, and gain complete control of the mobile devices. So moving forward, we're going to check whether our Apache web server is already running. So Apache is, of course, a web application server. I use it for hosting files. You can have your options. You can put it on Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, or any of those cloud providers that has those shared drives where you can put those files there and they share it freely. And people may not suspect them because the network intrusion detection system may bypass and say, hey, this is a friendly domain. We'll let it go. So let's go ahead and enter status. So we see that we got the Apache web server already running. So that is great. So the next thing we're going to launch our MSF console. So we're going to launch Metasploit framework and we're going to use a couple of options to help us start the listeners, start a couple of listeners, see what's going on in the environment. That's really important. So now we're waiting for Metasploit framework to cut start up. So here we got it. Amazing. Let's use exploit multi handler. And of course, we remember the payload that you used earlier. So we're going to set the payload, set payload as Android, followed by meter preter. So that's really, really important. 
So this will actually help us generate the listener. So once you do that, you can enter show options. So we got to set the L host, which is the only missing value on the current setting. So set L host is 182.168.1.23. We already got the L port set for it. So just in case you want to do any checks, you can always enter show options again. And from here, you can enter exploit. So once you enter exploit, we have the TCP handler started immediately. And of course, because I've already hijacked it into the system. So on the Android device, I can actually do a double click on a web browser and I can go right here. So of course, what I can see is the IP address coming from the web application server and I can hit enter on that. So this will start the download of the APK file. So when I click over here and we can see we have Android 8, Android app tree .apk. So I've already tried this three times so that I can actually refine the tutorial so they can learn much more beautifully. And from here, we can do a double click. And of course, it's asking you to install and you can click all on the permissions and you can see everything. So one more thing you want to know is that when you look, read the news articles about mobile phone hijacking and so on, we recognize that very simple applications ask you for all sorts of permissions. So that is really strange. So this is something that you have to very worry about, especially if you're doing any user awareness training. So we're going to go ahead and click install. So once we do that, I actually already have the app installed. So that would actually help speed things up. So what we can do is we can see right here, I have a main activity. So this is already installed. I can double click on it. And then of course, immediately I can have the sessions and so on. So I'm going to background the meter preter and we can enter sessions and when you see sessions you can see all the IP addresses they're connected to the machine so here we got port we got IP address of 21 coming from different ports going to the system we can kill those sessions actually because we don't need so many sessions from a single same IP address source so this is really powerful and from here of course you can interact with any of those sessions so I can actually enter sessions followed by dash I, and then we can actually go into say session one. And now that we're in the session, you can enter help. So help would actually tell you all the commands that you can put forward. So when I scroll up to the top and I can actually see that we have core commands, we can background the session of the meter preter. We can enter help information about the post module. We can load some of the extensions. So that's amazing, especially in terms of post exploitation, maintaining accesses and so on. So as we go down, we can see that we can also do some of the file system commands. So that's really, really useful, especially if you're trying to go after sensitive data, sensitive information, sensitive documents, and we want to download them, upload them. So lots of capabilities already created right here. And we can enter all the other information, routing, IP config, IF configuration, system commands, executing more commands, get user ID, get into shell, which is really powerful too. And we can do screenshots, webcam, and so on. So let's let's run through a couple of capabilities. So I can enter app list. So this will list all the applications that are installed within the system. So here we can see we got calculator, Android keyboard, and so on. And we have we even have the power to uninstall those applications if we want to. But we want to make sure this is stealthy control of it. So let's go ahead and dump out some context. So again we can actually do dumping of those contacts really, really quickly. So that's really, really helpful. And we can dump the call logs as well, the SMSs. So we can go ahead and enter dump, double tap, and then we can go dump on contacts. So here I can see that we got the file safe into our local directory. So I can actually open up a new window and I can zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. You can enter ls-l and then we can see we got some context detail and we see that we got some context that's created right here and we can do a cat context and straight away we can see what the options we have so of course i'm going to go to the one on 18 which is the latest one and we can actually see more data from there so we got 15183 and i hit enter again we can see some details of the number so again this is this is a makeup number that i put forward so of course, going back here, we can actually do a webcam listing. So of course, webcam listing, we're not gonna see anything because it's a virtualized machine. So what happens right now, I'm gonna go into my physical device that you're not able to see. I'm gonna launch the same APK file. So once I do that immediately, I can actually put this to background. And from here, I can actually enter exploit again. So we start listener, reverse handler, and so on. 
So of course, right now, when the user click onto the mobile application, it would actually send the information into the system, it would send a stage into the target machine. So that's really, really helpful. And from there, we can actually gain a lot more control. So right here, you can see we're sending stage again. We can see more detail, details, more information about the system and so on. And of course, we got more and more sessions. So that is really, really helpful. So we can enter sessions. And here we can see mostly coming from IP address of .21. So when we hit exploit and then I click on the from the machine, from the physical machine, I actually have a port of our IP address of .6. So it's ascending stage right now. And from here, we just wait a while more, be patient. And then we're gonna get our meter printer reverse TCP shell. So that's really, really powerful. So here, of course, right now I can put this to background and I can enter sessions. So I can see towards the end, I actually have another different session. So here, the functions between a virtual Android and a physical Android is highly differentiated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into sessions. I'm gonna interact directly with session number eight which is actually my physical mobile device. And from here, I can enter again, I can enter help. So if you remember earlier, we actually used the command and we used the command of webcam list. So I can actually go ahead and enter webcam list. And from here, I can see that I have four cameras on my machine, on my actual physical device. So if you're hacking a real mobile device, you are going to see cameras. So that's gonna differentiate some things there. And you can launch your cameras to actually take photos. So I'm currently in my room and I can actually do snapping of photos. We can do many, many capabilities right here. And over here, we're gonna explore further about how we can have post exploitation, maintaining accesses and escalating privileges. So one final thing, we can enter shell. From shell, I can enter LS. And then from LS, I can see what are the information I can see from here, who am I? And then it will tell you your information. You can enter SU to actually try to gain root information, PWD, to see where you are. So I have a lot of content inside my mobile device. Again, you can dump all sense, lots of sensitive data or contacts and so on. So there you see it, how quickly we could gain access into the system by downloading an APK file, exploding, executing the APK file, and immediately we gain complete control of the system. And then we can navigate across the whole file system, look for sensitive data, sensitive contacts, and many other capabilities, as well as downloading, uploading different files, executables, and then further our accesses into the system, and ultimately gaining content and capabilities into those critical information. So with that, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial. So if you like what you watch, like, share, leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And thank you so much for watching again.